shouldn't have done this. Oh, come on. This is going to be fun. Think of the stories we'll have to tell our grandchildren. We should have gone to Bermuda like my mother said. No, it's going to be all right. I'm sure these people will help us. Maybe nobody lives here. There's somebody here. Now, don't worry. Oh, Harvey, this place is creepy. I mean, we're just stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Like one of those old horror movies where the young couple comes up to the old deserted house on a dark, stormy night. Oh, Harvey, don't! It would be funny if the door just opened all by itself and there was nobody there. Harvey, please. Really? Come on. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Nobody's here. There's gotta be somebody here. Look, it's all furnished, and everything's clean. It's just a nice, normal house. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I don't like that painting. Gladys, this is no time to be an art critic. It's just a nice, normal painting. There's nothing to be frightened about. <laughs> oh, oh, Harvey! Who's there? Oh, um, it's us. Who are you? Uh, this is Harvey Dillman. And I'm Gladys. No, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> I'm Gladys, and this is. Uh, how, how do you do? Uh, you see, our uh, our car broke down out in front of your house, and we knocked on your door, and it, it just opened all by itself. Oh, yes, the the latch is broken. Oh well, I'm sure glad to hear that. We shouldn't have walked in on you like this. I I, I hope we didn't scare you. <laughs> well, to be honest, you did a little. I'm sorry. I. I Wonder, could we use your telephone to call a mechanic? Oh, you'll never get anyone out here this time of night. Oh. Well, maybe there's a hotel nearby and... There's nothing nearby. Oh. What are we going to do, Harvey? I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, well, I'm afraid you don't have much choice. You'll have to stay here tonight, and then we'll send somebody out in the morning to fix the car. Well, gee, uh, thank you very much. Yes, you're really very nice. I mean, you're just a nice, normal person. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Uh, Gladys is a little frightened. Uh, the place did look a little unusual. <laughs> Spooky, you know. <laughs> it's just an ordinary house, and we're just ordinary people. But uh, why are you carrying that candle? Don't you have any electric lights? <sighs> we had a power failure an hour ago. Oh! Oh, well, that's what it was. It was just a, a nice, normal power failure. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? There's voices. It's all right, Martha. This young couple had car trouble, and we're going to put them up for the night. This is Martha, my housekeeper. How do you do? How do you do? Now, I have a nice spare bedroom, and I think you'll both be very comfortable in it. I'll go up and fix it. 
Oh, well, fine. I'll go out to the car and get the bags. Uh, Harvey. Hmm. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I'm afraid that uh, we can't take that spare bedroom. I mean, not both of us. <laughs> See, we're not married yet. We're on our way to be married, but we're not married yet. Oh. Well, then I'll put uh, Gladys... Zimmerman. It's still Miss Gladys Zimmerman. Right, I'll put Miss Zimmerman upstairs in the bedroom. And, Mr. Dillman, you can sleep in the alcove downstairs. Fine, I'll go get the bag. Uh, I'll go with you, Harvey. Why? It's still raining out there. I like the rain. <laughs> this is no the bride. <laughs> this should have been their wedding night. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Sad? It's tragic. We're losing a good night's sleep. Oh, come on. Look, while I fix the bedroom, will you put the fold away in the alcove? Oh, sure. Then after that, I'll put out the no vacancy sign. We're all filled up. <laughs> Madam, what in thunder is going on in this house? I've heard voices, doors opening and closing, feet clumping up and down stairs. And a moment ago, that fiddle-footed housekeeper of yours put a squeaking, creaking, folding bed in my alcove. We have unexpected guests, Captain. A young couple on their way to get married. We're putting them up for the night. In my alcove? He's sleeping in your alcove. She's staying in here. But confounded woman, I've got work to do. I'm revising my sea charts in that alcove. It's only for one night. They'll be leaving in the morning. I don't want strangers in my house. Well, it's my house, too. I leased it. Not as an hotel. Oh, Captain, please. Hi. Were you talking to someone? Oh, it wasn't anything. I, I was talking to myself. I do that sometimes. It's, uh, it's very relaxing. <laughs> Certainly is a lovely room. Oh, I think you'll be very comfortable, Miss Zimmerman. Oh, I'm sure I will be. Thank you. Would you mind if I close that window, though? I'm afraid I'll be a little chilly. Oh, I'll do it. I'll put your bag over here, sweetheart. <laughs> What was that? What was what? The window was going up and down all by itself. <laughs> it was the sash weight. It's broken. I see. <laughs> the doors and the windows in this house seem to have a personality all of their own. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do, don't they? Well, Mr. Dillman, why don't you come along with me and I'll show you the alcove. Oh. Uh, good night, Gladys. <laughs> Harvey, it's just good night. It's not goodbye. Yeah, I know. But I was just thinking if we hadn't gotten on the wrong road tonight, we'd be... Uh... Yeah. There was a guy at the gas station. On the way back, I'm sure gonna stop and tell him off. It's not the best bed in the world, but it should be all right for one night. Oh, it's fine, just fine. I'm, I'm very grateful to you. If he snores, I'll slit his blasted throat. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> what? Oh, I wasn't talking to you, Mr. Dillman. Oh? Who, who were you talking to? Uh, Martha. You were telling me to be quiet? Oh, no, Martha. I... I don't know. I, I'm tired. We're all tired. Why don't we go to bed and let Mr. Dillman get some sleep? Okay. Good night. Sleep well. Good night, Mr. Dillman. See you in the morning. Yes, good night. And, 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 and thanks again. <laughs>
just wanted to see if you were all right. Of course I'm all right. What's the matter? W would you like me to come in and talk to you for a while, Gladys? Harvey, I'm going to bed. Well, I think I'd like to be with you for a few minutes, if it's all right. Harvey, you know our agreement. I know, I know. I just want to talk. We're going to be married tomorrow. Harvey, you're not wearing a shirt. Huh? <laughs> well, Gladys, you've seen me at the beach without a shirt. I've never seen you without a shirt indoors. Gladys, would you please let me in? All right, but just for a minute. Sit down with me for a minute, Gladys. Now, Harvey, we've waited this long, and I think... Well, I know, I know. I just want to talk to you. For goodness sakes, Gladys. Come on. Well, all right. Gladys, um, uh, what would you think if I just kind of, if I could lie down on the floor here tonight? <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Well, because I'm worried about you, Gladys, being alone out here in this room. Harvey, that's ridiculous. You cannot stay in this room. Would you like to stay with me down in the alcove? <laughs> I would like for you to leave right now. No, Gladys, please. Gladys. Harvey. Good night. I'll talk to you in the morning. Yes, you don't I'll talk to you. <laughs> People have got to get out of this house at once. I can't work. That young fool down there is driving me out of my mind. Have you no human feelings at all? Hmm? They're a nice young couple. And this was supposed to have been their wedding night. They barged in here without warning. I want them to leave the same way. Well, they can't leave. Their car broke down. There's no way for them to leave. Madam, when the spirit is willing, there is always a way. <laughs> out of petrol. This is probably the tank. <laughs> Blasted ballast tank. Why is it so hot? There appears to be a loose wire. <laughs> I'm the king invention of the devil. <laughs> for trying to be helpful. Well, no more. From now on, I'm going to use sterner measures. Please lower your voice. Why? No one can hear me except you, unless I wish it. But of course, that's the idea. A word or two whispered in the young lady's ear in the darkness. A little howl on the stairway. Oh, no, you won't. You absolutely will not frighten them. If you do, I'll never speak to you again. I mean that. Oh, what I have come to. For a hundred years I've been master here, living a quiet and peaceful life. And now... Oh, if only these were the old days, and I had those two young fools on board my ship. What would you make them do, walk the plank? 
No, I'd marry them and put an end to this nonsense. Then they could both sleep in the spare room and I could work in peace. Of course. That's it. What's it? Hmm? Oh, never mind. You get back to your book. I won't disturb you again. Yes, who is it? It's me, Claymore, Captain Greg. Hello. <laughs> no. no blast. Please, 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 open the door, Gladys. Go away, Harvey. I'm not going to open it. Gladys, please, I just want to talk to you for a second. I need you. It's an emergency. No, Harvey. The answer is no. Come on. Yes, speaking. Who is it, please? Uh <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? I want you to do something for me. I need a minister. Oh. You want to confess your sins? <laughs> no, you nincompoop. There are two young people staying at the house that I want married at once. But I don't know where to get a minister. Now, Reverend Taylor is, is, is ill, and Reverend Baxter, he's out of town. But surely there must be somebody who can perform a marriage ceremony. Is there a justice of the peace? Well, 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 well yes. Who is he? Can we get hold of him? Oh, I suppose so. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> You. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, it's a few dollars here, a few dollars there. It adds up. Come on, let's go. I don't usually make house calls, you know, and, and at this hour of the night, I should be at least paid time and a half. Stand over there. And I'd rather not be paid in gold, gold or blooms either. The last time I got some very strange looks at the bank. You get your feet blasted. Stand over there. And we need witnesses. Now, don't forget that. I'm not going to do anything that's not legal. I've awakened Mrs. Muir. You shall also have the housekeeper here. Uh, the main thing to remember is to get on with it as fast as possible so that I can get back to work. Oh, Mrs. Muir, have you talked to them? Are they willing? Well, Gladys wasn't too anxious, but Harvey was very anxious, and I think he's finally persuaded her to. Good. Where are they? They're getting dressed. Fine, fine. Now, remember, as soon as they appear, we get on with it. The children are up. They want to see the wedding. Oh, Martha, I want them to get some sleep. Oh, but they're so excited about it. And they could help, too. Why, Candy could bring the flowers in and Jonathan could give the bride away. <laughs> Jonathan? Well, at this time of night, you can't be too choosy. <laughs> right, okay. Kmore, hitch up your pajamas. They're showing under your trousers. Hello. Oh, Harvey, I want you to meet Claymore Gregg, our Justice of the Peace. It's very nice of you to come out at this hour, Your Honor. My Honor? Oh, oh that. Oh, yes. You have the ring. Yeah, I gave it to the best man. Who? You know, the kid. Oh. Everybody's ready. They're all out in the hall. Oh, good. Then we can get started. The candy. Dillman, solemnly declare before Almighty God that you take this woman, Gladys Zimmerman, to be your lawfully wedded wife. Do you promise to love her, cherish and protect her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to her so long as ye both shall live? I do. Do you, Gladys, solemnly declare before Almighty God that you now take this man, Harvey Dillman, to be your lawfully wedded husband? Do you promise to love, honor, and cherish him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to him as long as ye both shall live? I do. I therefore declare you to be husband and wife. The ring, please. The ring.
Congratulations, Mr. Delman. What a beautiful bride you are. I feel it was my best night. You were marvelous. Thank you. Delman. Oh, you were a beautiful bride. Lovely bride. Mark, what's one? I thought Well, let's go upstairs, Gladys, to our bedroom. I mean, it's late. Everybody wants to go to bed. Thank you. See you fixed it. Thank you. Bye bye. Harvey, I don't know why it was so silly last night. It's it's just a nice normal house. There's nothing to be frightened of at all. <laughs> Let's go, Gladys. 